However, what I do know is that, according to the rule, one must carry out the three humiliations to gain access to what they guard. One of them must be performed in the high mountains, covered in thick blankets of snow and ice. Another in the depths of a dark, entombed church where the sleeper lies. And the last one, at the end of the trail carved by moans that claw their way out of an iron spiral, in the bowels of the bell named Hondo that grows into the earth. When we start our journey, Delgracias tells us that three humiliations need to be performed in order to enter the church of the Mother of Mothers. I have already covered the first humiliation, but today I would like to focus on the Great Bell and what lies below it. This large bell is located far away from Albero and beyond the mountains of the Endless Dusk. In it, we meet the Pilgrim Redento, who tells us that Hondo was crafted by a mysterious forger named Linguist. Every bell in Custodia owns its existence to this man, but Hondo was his magnum opus, which he never saw to completion. His vision was to erect the bell upside down so that its ringing could shake the earth and reach distant lands. In Abrahamic religions, bells are usually used to unite worshippers and call them towards prayer and penance. I can't help but think that Hondo was probably meant to be used in the exact same way. From the outside perspective, we can see how massive it is and how dark it gets once a person decides to plunge itself down its throat. It inhabits many different creatures and abominations that roam the abandoned platforms. One of such abominations are sagittal martyrs, which are beings that were sawn in half while their organs remained exposed to the outside world. Their heads are encompassed by a golden halo and shrouded by rubies and gems, while their hands carry two large bolted blades. The look of this enemy can be attributed to the prophet Isaiah, who died for his faith by being sawn in half with his ancient execution technique. In Hondo, we also meet winged faces, which are faithful representations of mortuary masks used in the Roman Empire and Egypt. The masks would allow them to make facial copies of deceased people, so their beauty would stay intact for the rest of time. But apart from these beings, the area also has statues supporting the giant bell. By destroying them and alarming the bell, the whole thing collapses and the penitent one plunges into the dark pits where three women can be heard screaming in anguish and suffering. To understand the penance of these women, we first need to learn their story. Through the description of three key items, we can read the priest's horrifying first-hand experience. Yes, brother, it's been a long time since I stopped officiating nuptials. Since the day those three sisters embraced each other, praying. Since the day they asked the miracle itself to help them to avoid such a holy bond. No one knows what they asked for in that prayer, nor why they didn't want to be wedded. The miracle, with its grievous plans, went to the aid of the sisters, if you can call that aid. I was there, I bore witness to that creation. The hairs of the sisters grew and braided, wrapping around them, making a terrifying crunching noise, until it covered them completely, shaping itself as an egg, an egg made out of rough, knotty hair. All those who had come to the sacred link knelt in the presence of that fruit of the miracle, thus making it an object of worship from that moment on. We built an altar worthy of such holiness and placed it there. Shortly afterwards, during one bleak night, the priests who slept inside the church heard a loud groan, a cry, made out of three voices, yet one voice at the same time. When we got there, the egg was gone. Ever since then, I have been looking for it, visiting all places I could, and talking to every soul I could. This lore segment tells us a story of three young women who were to be wed, but instead decided to abandon the mandated holy ritual and pray to the miracle for salvation. Since they broke their bond, the miracle, through its own twisted ways, freed the women from their destiny of marriage, but morphed them into an egg made out of their own hair. After a while, the three women merged together into a single being with one united voice called Altas Gracias. 
The miracle also seemed to have transformed the anguish, sorrow and pain of the three sisters into three spirits that now have to serve and protect the holy wound of contrition. We can pick up more information about this creature in the following item description. The cruelty of a broken promise shaped Altas Gracias and the affliction made her sorrows into flesh. The affliction here is a reference to the Cradle of Affliction, which is an immaterial object that the Penitent One seeks in order to stop the miracle's punishment upon the world. It was created when Escribar turned his throne away from his congregation, which makes it entirely possible that the actual Cradle is the throne itself. After turning the throne, Escribar transformed into a giant tree, which burned for 90 days and left behind a mountain of ash that swallowed up all the priests and holy servants, transforming them into beasts of faith and rage. The throne now still stands on the ash mountain, waiting for the true penitent one to take its place, satisfy the miracle with great penance and temporarily end the age of the turned throne. Until that moment arrives, the miracle will still manifest itself to the people of Custodia like it did to the young sisters. When we fight them, we can even see the signs of the miracle's manifestation through the roots that are growing out of their bodies. These roots tend to appear everywhere where the miracle manifested itself. This includes the knot of the three wards, the Empidad, the Holy Line, the Twisted Father and the protagonist himself. Once defeated, we receive an item called Cante Hondo of the Three Sisters. In Spain, Cante Hondo is a vocal style in flamenco which is classified to be one of the deepest and most serious forms of singing. Knowing that, we can think of this item as some sort of a song or a prayer that the priests used to worship Altas Gracias. The chant goes as follows. Liberated you three, prayed as one. Liberated you three, pleaded as one. Liberated you three, were born as one. Free and holy, of grace divine, you're no longer three, you're now one. This hatred towards marriage and their future husband can also be seen from Altas Gracias in a ritual where they completely denounce their betrothed. To initiate this, we have to sacrifice three symbolic items, which represent the rejection of money, bondage of marriage and love for their future husband, thus effectively waking them up from a deep slumber. With this gold that melts between my fingers, I reject the riches of my betrothed. With this torn ribbon, I reject this bond with my betrothed. With this veil, I cover my face in mourning for the dead love for my betrothed. Penitent one in silence, who summons my three voices? Three sisters became as one, thus birthing a grievous miracle called Altus Gracias. This egg conceals something of ours that still remains immaculate. The egg of deformity, which we receive from Altas Gracias, inhabits three small tongues, which represent the voices of the three sisters. Looking at the description of this item, we get to know more about the metaphorical undertones of this egg. We will enclose our voices inside this egg, our tongues that endlessly twist and grow in order to escape. Knots of freedom we never had. Our hair will cover this ovum with cold until the heat of embers makes it hatch. The penitent one takes this egg of hair and hatches it with the help of the burning embers that are still left on the trunk of the dying tree. The divine blessings of Saltpeter transforms the egg into a holy relic constructed by three tongues that symbolize the sisters' eternal pleas and suffering. The tongues speak words that only the foundations of Custodia can understand, which allows the Penitent One to manipulate twisted roots all around the land. Now if the Penitent One returns back to the cave, Altas Gracias doesn't seem to be there anymore. 
Maybe the purification of her relic freed the sisters from the miracle's curse, and they are finally free to peacefully reside together on the other side of the dream. So this was my interpretation of Altas Gracias, but I would love to hear what you guys think about it as well. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything new, maybe leave a like or possibly subscribe to the channel. But that's pretty much it for me. I'll see you guys in the next one.